I mean, it makes me think of two things I want to maybe just riff on for a few minutes. One we'll get to in a second, which is China and Belt and Road, which mm. we're going to talk about more in the show. But yeah, I mean, just the incredible incoherence around impeachment. Mm -hmm. And I say that as somebody who, you know, I've said I'm on record that it's like, sure, I, I, I think, you know, I think it's probably the right call. I love the idea of monopolizing his time. I think if it was done in the right strategic way, it can make him bleed. And also, let's be really clear, too. He is bleeding to some extent. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump's a very unpopular president. Right, like people need to Nobody remind themselves him. of that. Nobody, <laughs> nobody likes him. Well, actually, she's one of the only people that people like less yeah. than Donald yeah. Trump. Speaking of which, which we will get to that nightmare in a couple of minutes. But the uh, the uh, there's a variety of grounds of critique, right? So one is, you know, why are we not? Why are we not impeaching Donald Trump for having concentration camps, mm -hmm. terrorizing migrants? Why are we not? Which, in fact, that is precisely the part of his administration which we can use Gestapo, Nazi, and fascist terminology around without flinching. Um, disgusting crimes against humanity committed by all of these obscene people. Uh, then, of course, you know the questions of the uh, 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 I can't pronounce it right now. Emoluments, uh, emoluments clause, and mm -hmm. personal corruption, all of that stuff. Um, you know, and then of course, objectively, this phone call, what he did, is obviously, um, you know, of course, is wrong. In fact, mm -hmm. even people who go really hard against both our policy in Eastern Europe and the political wisdom of going after Trump in this way, all admit that it's wrong. Mm -hmm. So none of this is on the table. But the first and more substantive problem is how the Democrats have chosen to go at him without those two other much more primary and serious issues. And the other thing being, again, is just this, we have a slew of things. We've got NAFTA too. Mm -hmm. We've got them reauthorizing the Patriot Act. We've got them giving him a space force. Mm -hmm. So we actually have even the bureaucratic building blocks, which were already in place, of an increasingly authoritarian state, of a fusion of the national security state and Silicon Valley and absolutely unprecedented, dangerous, alarming, uh, and frankly, terrifying ways, all signed off on by a majority of corporate Democrats, which is we know just as Democrats, mm -hmm. even as the hyperventilating about this stuff. Now, again, the dialectic, because I don't want to say that there's nothing there and yada, yada, yada. But it really does. It's extraordinary to me. But, and I say that as somebody who, you know, everybody in this room, we take beating Donald Trump more seriously than Paul Krugman does, mm -hmm. which is why we want to be clear about Joe Biden's record as an example. I, I would just add to just I mean, you know, just generally about impeachment is that when it comes down to what the political process for actually impeaching a president is, right, there's still a lot of questions of like, you know, the actual like removal from office when it comes to the president. And in my opinion, you're not going to be able to do that unless you can make a case that is so strong that it actually like invigorates so many American people that they are also demanding for the president, you know, to step down, to get out of office. Or at the very least, out. it's seriously making and, believe. But the way that the Democrats yeah. have pushed this impeachment, um, yeah. It's so technical. It's so. I mean, there's a certain group of people who like it. People who like, you know, long legal dramas, maybe. But you know, for the average American, it's not. It's these are the crimes that they're bringing up, and there's plenty of crimes that you could bring up that would, have, you know, have this reaction with people. They're just. They're not the kind of thing that inspires that anger and that frustration that is going to be necessary to pursue at a successful impeachment. And there's a, a reason for that. It's because the crimes that Donald Trump is guilty of are crimes that, for the most part, allegedly the, of the Democrat party are also complicit in um, and they don't want to draw political attention to that and you know that's a political reality that we have to face right now I think that I'd, I mean I'm all happy to see Donald Trump impeached don't get me wrong at all but you see who's driving it and this massive problem yeah right? the, I, I listened to um, to do my due diligence as a producer um, I listened to the New York Times impeachment po uh, podcast once one episode um, it had Emily Bazelon <laughs> strong on producing and the, the, yeah. <laughs> the, hey man, I think my job seriously. I listened to one episode of the time. 
it was terrifying because they talked about that whole thing about the decision to keep it narrowly focused on this Ukraine stuff when there's a whole bunch of different things they could just add. And what did they it. say about that? And all they could say to it was, I understand why some pe- Emily Bazelon said this. I understand why some people are, uh, you know, upset about this, but this is the way that they're going to go. Okay, so there's just no no actual, like, analysis into what that is. Um, right. Mainly because, like, Democrats are, like, cucks, basically. Yeah, they're um, cucks. And, and the other thing, too, that I just couldn't, you know... You gotta just make one more quick, yeah, quick point, ahead. which is that then they moved on to like, well, what does this all mean? And so I'm like, okay, here's what this means. And then it's like, well, now we wait to see what the polls do. And if this looks good enough for Democrats, maybe we get three or four more to like be gung ho about or whatever mm-hmm. it was. Right. And it's like, this is, we're already just poll watching already in this process. I mean, that's what it is. And then of course we know like, so no Republicans going to vote for this. And if I had to put money down, cinema and mansion will vote against it. Mm-hmm. So how do we, and Possibly Doug Jones. Definitely cinema. Cinema and Mansion are two of the worst people in U.S. politics. Like we're gonna need to get to know them because they are <laughs> horrible. Mm-hmm. They are political, you know, public enemies. So, you know, how will it then play when Trump can run around the country saying like two Democrats, two Democrats, and people won't know, of course, that these are, you know, extreme far right politicians with you know, pro Trump records. Mm-hmm. I also, I also just think that, um, during one of the hearings, there were all of these law professors coming out and, and, and doing like, you know, including real melodramatic, like you tell Russia to butt out of our election stuff. <laughs> yeah. And, and here's the thing. I think there's definitely people who identify on the left who actually really underestimate the profound importance that even if we're in, even if liberal democracy is a fiction, that maintaining that fiction is protecting a lot of important things, if that makes sense. So it's, there's, there's degrees of things and ripping the mask off completely harms a lot of people. Now it makes things more transparent about how structurally harmful everything is. But I'm not somebody who wants to just say like, yeah, man, like whatever, who cares, right? Like there are, and when I first talked to the people from like the Workers' Party in Brazil, that was the first thing they were saying, like, yeah, you guys have circuit breakers going back hundreds of years. We're a modern republic created in the late 80s. We don't have the level of institutional protection, Mm -hmm. possibly. Mm -hmm. And as much as it's the wrong political strategy, um, you know, there were plenty of courts that initially rejected the Muslim ban as an example, right? So I want to always put that in the mix. But at the same time, watching r- very highly respected legal minds and intellectuals sitting there talking like they got their moment on some type of like grade C TV drama mm-hmm. about the Russians and our democracy. Let me just say even really narrowly, I don't even need to go to socialist grounds. You could still be talking about that after Bush v. Gore when we saw a presidential election get stolen. Mm -hmm. One candidate not only won the popular vote, but Al Gore would have won Florida if it was popularly counted. And the Supreme Court, they used a reading of the 14th Amendment, which they're constantly trying to undermine so they can go after civil rights cases. And they even Mm -hmm. wrote... People should look up this lead decision. They even wrote in the lead decision, like, don't use this for for, for future cases. This is a one-off mm-hmm. <laughs> that we are using to protect George W. Bush's civil rights about, quote, unquote, double standards and voting count. If you can, a couple of decades after that, not to mention, of course, the research from Princeton about how we're not in a democracy, all this stuff, and still just be like, the answer is you butt out, Mr. Putin. <laughs> I, it's not only embarrassing, it's terrifying because it really does show that in the liberal mindset, there is an analogous set of delusions. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. To I, the conservative one. No, I mean, I think there's no doubt about it. And, you know, what we're seeing right now is, I mean, even just watching this, you know, I know we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but watching this whole grand parade of like the New York Times endorsement, like there has been, oh, no, but like there has been like a real loss of, of like strategy and like understanding of politics or even understanding the political moment right now. And this, I just, I just feel like this impeachment um, fail, you know, what it, it, I feel like Donald Trump is like a once in a lifetime opposite, uh, 
opportunity for an opposition party right. because he's like so obviously corrupt. He's so obviously evil. He's so obviously wicked. He's so obviously incompetent. Mm -hmm. And you see the failure of the people who are in control of the Democratic Party to be able to use this as an opportunity to benefit themselves. And, and I, as somebody who watches politics closely, it's endlessly frustrating as somebody who cares about people in this country who is so worried um, when you see these kind of horrible racist uh, attacks that have been, you know, growing under Donald Trump and these movements to attack, you know, Iranian people and Muslim yep. people. I mean, it's very frightening. And and they don't even oppose him on Iran or yeah. Venezuela. I mean, we we I, we were just talking about the policy set. You have a co-signing on surveillance state, warmongering, and corporate friendly trade deals that don't don't even mention climate. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, but oh, you know, butt out, Mr. Putin. <laughs> it's it's insane. It's mm -hmm. it's. I mean, it's it's honestly, it's it is so delusional. And, you know, you get, I'm glad you brought up the Times endorsement. We'll talk about it more later. But it's like, you know, this Bernie Sanders stuff, sure, don't, of course, you're not going to endorse Bernie Sanders, obviously. Mm. You represent a totally different class position. But you can't just say that somebody who has worked for decades in the legislative branch of government you know, like it's just—I mean, it's just—it's just incredible. Like, oh, yeah. oh, what are you going to do to pass an agenda? Well, I'm going to mobilize people in a civic shared uh, struggle to engage in their democratic process. Well, hello, Pol Pot. Yeah, I mean, that I mean, it's, it's just so it's, irresponsible. It's so. I don't. I mean, honestly, I do think it's irresponsible. I do think much of it is malicious and in bad faith. But I think also a, a legitimate amount of it is is genuinely stupid. Mm. It is genuinely people who have not read books who have gone to certain professional training institutions where they learn to mouth a bunch of cliches mm -hmm. and write the right responses on papers and that's it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I went to school in DC and I know a lot of those people, not you know, necessarily people who are at the New York Times editorial board, but like the asp the aspiring you, the character. aspiring, you know, aspiring. And, and it really is amazing that, you know, people do learn a kind of script is like, oh, you know, you're not able to change anything. You know, the only way to get things done is by incremental smart policy, right? Even though you can look at you can point to, you know, point out to those people that the left's trajectory for the past 30 years has been that let's do smart um, middle of the road, nothing too radical, nothing too crazy, you know, political tinkering on the edges. And that's how we'll build like this great society. And, and, and there's just this complete ignorance of, of the history. Instead, it's a kind, you know what it is? I mean, it's really not to get too like psychoanalytic about it. But no, it's really dude. like, you know, you want the, um, you want the approval of the person in power. So like these kids, they go to schools right. that like, you know, their universities, especially, especially like political science departments and economics departments are just so pushed. That's what Filled with like right wingers who have lots of money from, you know, big institutions that are pushing them um, to push a certain kind of ideology. And these, these young kids come in there and they want the approval of the professor. So they say, you know what, I'm going to learn like the basic grammar of this argument. And I'm just going to use it as a ready-made argument, regardless of the historical um, contingencies, regardless of the social movements, regardless of the economic factors. I'm just going to use it over and over, regardless of how much the whole world around you is falling down and everything that you've been taught has is wrong, still, you know, continuing the same kind of argument. I mean, there's something very pathological about it. Right. That's the word. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.